Got something, got something, got something. Oh man. That is an entire nest of baby copperheads. How amazing is that? Uh, these copperheads are very, very young. They usually do not take long after birth to spread out from each other and kind of get some distance in between themselves. But all these guys were still in a big cluster when I found them. So they were born very, very recently. Uh, I'd say within the last week or probably even sooner. They all look like they still have, have not even shed the first time yet. So their colors are a little bit more dull and they've got this kind of like thin membrane, which you can see, which is kind of cool. And before you guys freak out in the comments, these guys are in a tank, not because I'm keeping them. I'm not doing that. These guys will be released at the end of this video. I just put them in a tank so I can safely get up close and personal with them without having to worry about putting myself into any kind of real danger. Danger. That's what we're going to be talking about today. They were going to ask the question, are copperheads dangerous to humans? Majority of people on the East Coast would tell you, yeah, they're very dangerous. They're poisonous snakes. However, I'm going to argue differently. But before I get into some of those arguments, as to why I'm gonna say differently, we need to understand why people think they're dangerous. A, they are venomous. This inherently does make them more dangerous than say something like a rat snake or a king snake, right? They do have a little bit of venom. However, their venom is the least potent and the least dangerous of any North American viper. Your average adult would survive a copperhead bite just fine uh, without any medical attention at all. Granted, they would be very painful, but they would most likely survive. Now, if you did get medical attention, if you got a lot pumped into you, they might go ahead and give you some anti-venine. Anti-venine is very expensive. Someone that has gotten bit by a copperhead and either needed anti-venine or was just prescribed it as a precaution is gonna by nature be a little bit more wary of copperheads because they spent a lot of money due to a copperhead. And that's understandable, I think. But why do copperheads bite people? Are they evil? Are they out to get you? What is their motive? The majority of venomous snake bites on the East Coast are by copperheads. And there is a reason for this, but it's not because they're evil or out to get you. They're one of the only vipers in the United States that tends to not warn anything that's a threat whatsoever. Rattlesnakes will rattle their tail to make a big noise. Cotton mouths will gape. They'll show you that white cotton colored mouth. It's really bright, it's a warning, right? Copperheads, on the other hand, do not do either of these things. And their patterning should give you an idea as to why this is. They rely nearly solely on camouflage. They have this perfect pattern of bending with the dry leaves and dry areas that they inhabit. Okay, let's do a common scenario I've heard. Oh, I was out in the garden and I was, um, you know, tending to my plants and I was picking fruit or picking vegetables or whatever. And all of a sudden I felt a terrible sting on my hand and I pull it back and there was a big old copper hit right there. And he bit into my hand and he was just waiting for me to come over there and get too close to him. That's a story I've heard before. Yes, it's understandable to be upset. You just got bit, you're in a lot of pain and uh, you might have a high medical bill if you, you know, need to get anti -venine. I'm not negating any of that. But just for the fun of the thought experiment, let's take a step back and go through that scenario from the snake's point of view. It's starting to get warm this morning. You're in your den, you're kind of chilling, but you're starting to warm up and you're starting to get hungry. Okay, let's go look for food. You're wandering around outside, you wander into a garden or you go into a garden that you've been in before. Uh, maybe there's lots of mice there that are eating off the plants and the vegetables. It's a good hunting ground. Or maybe you're just out trying to warm up and the garden is the only exposed place in the yard. Regardless, you're not out there looking for people. You have literally nothing to gain by biting a person. There's no reason that you would ever go out of your way to do that. You accomplish nothing by doing that. For the copperhead, nothing. So you're out there in the garden, minding your own business, and all of a sudden this big old giant walks into view. You see him in the distance and he's kind of walking over towards you. You start to freak out. Oh man, there's this big thing coming at me. What do I do? Your natural instinct tells you, 
If I say still, maybe he won't notice me. So you freeze. You're blending in with the, you know, the leaves and the debris around the garden, and you're just kind of sitting as still as you can, hoping that he doesn't notice you. This big old giant is going around doing things with all the plants, and he's moving down a row, and you're at the end of that row. He's going down and he's picking a, you know, one of the fruit off of each of the plants as he moves, and he gets closer and closer to you. You start to freak out more and more. Maybe he sees me, maybe he sees me. He's gonna grab me next. He's gonna, he's, he's gonna get me. Now, if this was a rattlesnake, at this point you'd be rattling, and you'd be saying, stay away from me. And all of a sudden that person would be, oh, there's a rattlesnake, I need to be careful, or I need to go away. But you're not doing that. You're hoping he doesn't see you. Until the very last minute he gets to your plant, he's reaching to pick a fruit. You might be thinking he's trying to grab you. All of a sudden, oh, he sees me, he's going after me. I need to go into defense mode and And all of a sudden that person get bit, he didn't even see you until the last minute, but from your point of view, it might have looked like he was trying to go for you. Didn't think it happened if he's walking in the forest and he steps on you, or steps close to you. The copperhead feels like you're threatening him. From his point of view, he's very small. He's looking up at you. Relatively, you're very, very big to this copperhead, right? You're a, you're, you're a massive animal that, to all the copperhead's knowledge, has plans to eat him or, you know, hurt him in some way, shape, or form, even if that wasn't your intention. So looking at these little copperheads, right, we've gone over, you know, how they think, right? Look at these guys. They're not trying to get me. They want to be left alone. They're not, you know, banging at the edge of the glass trying to get out, but they're not, they're not trying to get me. They're not savage animals. Yes, they have that potential, so it's our responsibility as people to have respect for that potential, right? And to be careful around copperheads, and be careful even when we don't know if there are copperheads around, right? When you go hiking, wear shoes. Wear closed-toed shoes. Be careful. When you're gardening, you know, really pay attention to where you're reaching before you reach. If people looked where they step before they step and where they grab before they grabbed, there would be almost all copperhead bites would be taken care of. Yes, there are exceptions. Well, there's gonna be a million people in the comments. Well, you know, I got bit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure, there's gonna be exceptions, but I'm not talking about those. I'm talking majority, right? The majority of bites would be avoided if people used common sense. And by the way, copperheads play an enormous role in the ecosystem, right? They are the kings of keeping rodent populations under control. That's, that's what they do. They're very, very good at that. Vipers are the uh, only snakes in the United States that have heat pits. They can actually sense heat. People say, oh, snakes can just see heat. Not all snakes can. Vipers have heat pits. They're called pit vipers for a reason. Not all snakes can do that. That makes them a powerful enemy against things like pests, like rodents and stuff. They're very good to have around, and they're very important in ecosystems. So, that is my argument in defense of copperheads. <laughs> Please, tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Let me know, um, you know, what your opinions are on this whole uh, fiasco. But right now, it's time to go let these guys go. I'm Maze Animal Adventures, and thank you for watching.